Hello, uh, it's Fishmeal. Welcome to my studio. I have a long weekend this weekend, so I am going to sprint on my axes for the costume that I'm working on right now. Um, I have two really big props that I want to make that have like some mechanical stuff. They've required engineering and also will require foam smithing. So um, I'd really like to get one of those to the point where it's ready for paint by the end of Monday, which I have off work. Here's what I'm working on. Um, let me show you where I am now, what I have done now. This is two Lazy Susans stacked on top of each other with a metal tube bolted in the middle. Um, this means that there are three planes of rotation. The bottom piece of wood rotates independently of the handle, which rotates independently of the top part of the Lazy Susan, um, which another piece of wood gets bolted onto that. So ultimately you end up with the handle and then two blades that all rotate on their own plane. So I have like the rotation engineering part done, but I still need to do um, a locking mechanism, which I think I'm just gonna do with pins. So I have a metal bar here that I've bought. Um, and then I also want to skin, just put like a basic foam skin on the blade the, the blade part of the wood before I permanently attach everything to the Lazy Susans. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to get done tonight is to get started on the pins and to get the blades um, covered in foam. I think that's pretty doable. And then tomorrow I can start putting everything together. So let's get started. All right, I have my wood with the metal bar permanently attached hopefully. I have the two sides of the blade cut out in foam. This is cheap foam. Um, I'm using it because I'm using up a lot and this may end up being a rough draft so I don't want to use nice foam for this yet. Uh, contact cement and two brushes because I inevitably ruin one of them. So I'm just going to start putting on contacts on it. First I'm going to kick this cat out because it's about to get smelly. Oh no. Oh no. So I got the 
plates skinned in foam and I went to put the pins in or to make the pins which was my second goal for this evening but it turns out um, I need a new bit for my drill because I don't have one that's big enough so and I really didn't feel like leaving the house again tonight it's dark it's cold so um, I'll do that tomorrow I was gonna cut out the some of the detailing the foam detailing for the blades but I went and looked at my pattern which I made way at the beginning of this whole project and didn't like it. I'm not even sure really what I based it on. So, and it's like, it's like more detailed than the model in the game, but not detailed enough to like look super fancy. So, um, there's a cinematic that had a more of a super fancy version that I'm that I have redrawn onto this paper and I'm repatterning. So yeah, it's a task that I did not anticipate having to do this weekend, but trying to do it right, you know. So and this is the kind of detail that I enjoy putting into projects at this point. And all of these little cutouts are gold, like bright gold. So I think they're gonna look very dramatic. It's not gonna be easy to cut out a foam, but Let me show you what it looks like. So everywhere you can see the cutting mat through the paper will actually be a hole in the foam as well. So this will be like a two millimeter layer of foam with inset gold details. It's gonna be cool. This is the kind of thing that obviously you could definitely cut it out with scissors, but I think using a knife gets you a much, A, a nicer cut in general, and B, much smoother curves and straighter lines. Like I feel comfortable cutting a straight line with my knife, but I can't, for the life of me, cut a straight line with a pair of scissors. Right. Now I just need to cut this out of foam. Oh dear. Hello, I am four hours into day two of X Weekend um, and it's going pretty well. I've managed to avoid doing any engineering today and have just done foam smithing. So that's good for me, bad for the project. So let me show you what I've done. So they both have the red detailing put on and you can see that Every single edge of this detailing has been dremeled down, so it, ha it has a, a slight bevel to it. I think that makes it look a lot more realistic. And then I've done the first draft of, the, of putting the actual edge on the blade. Obviously it needs a whole lot of work, but I'm going to try to make that the last thing I do today so that the foam clay can dry overnight. And then I also put this case on both the front and the back 
of each. So the back has gotten a little bit of detailing too. This is about how much it'll get. Won't get a whole lot more. Um, and like the side, that'll need Dremel down, but they're looking good, I think. And they'll sit like that together once they're all attached. So they're looking like a thing, I think. Woo. Right now I'm um, moving on to patterning some more detail. I want to do these little, they're, they hold the spikes on, but the spikes are only on one of the blades. So I want to do the spikes and the spike holders now. And if I could get those done by the end of the day, plus get foam clay put on the um, edges, I think that would be a really good accomplishment because that would be like almost all of the details of the foam details on the um, on the things. So that would leave the rest of the weekend for cleaning up um, and then finishing the engineering parts, which is what I've been putting off because I'm tired of it. So I'm going to do some more patterning now. sitting here struggling because the game, the concept art, and the cinematic are all um, pretty dissimilar for this little detail and I can't decide which one I want to do. I actually like the game one a lot, but it has a red gem in it that doesn't really match anything else in the costume. Um, the crown has a blue gem, so I could just make the gems blue. But... Yeah, it, it, this is the kind of thing that would almost be easier if I were just copying one thing instead of trying to like take the coolest details from three different things, you know? Um, but it's a good problem to have. <laughs> it's like 20 minutes after I said, maybe I can get a lot of the details done for <laughs> these blades. And um, I'm currently going extra <laughs> on um, the spike holders, which I should not be doing if I want to get done with the details today. But also, I think this is how you win contests by doing detail in a quality way and this is what I'm good at and this is what I want to do like the whole reason I'm rushing not rushing but the whole reason I'm sprinting this weekend is because there's a contest application deadline that I'm not sure if I can make and ultimately I'm not willing to um, sacrifice quality or detail in order to apply for a contest where quality and detail are going to be what wins. <laughs> you know, like I'd rather either wait for next year or just pick a different contest. And this contest was a stretch for me anyway, so like there will be other costumes that are mo more suited than this one and that I can time better. 
So I'm gonna continue sprinting for this weekend. Like I'm having fun and I'm getting a ton done, but I've also just like thinking about whether I wanted to do these details or not. I kind of came to peace with the fact that I want details, one, two, three, four, five. I want details over everything else, so. <laughs> Which like if I kind of come to that conclusion over and over during this costume, but I had kind of forgotten it um, while I was like hurrying or trying not to actually hurry. So, yeah, I think if I don't get enough done this weekend to feel okay applying for this contest, it'll probably be a relief, you know? It'll mean that I can put all of the time and effort into this that I want and not worry about a deadline. Or, or, you know, pick a new deadline that's more realistic, so. But we'll see. I mean, I've gotten a lot done, so maybe it'll still happen. So it's the end of Saturday. I worked for five and a half hours today. I was not ready to quit, but I had a game night scheduled, which I thought I would need the break. So I don't regret scheduling it, but I do wish I had had, I really wanted to hit eight hours today, but there, there didn't end up being enough time. Like I, I took a break for lunch and that's all, so. No regrets. Um, this the axes are looking good. I think. Um, I let me show you what I did. I put this layer of foam clay all along the blade or the edge. I mean, all of this, the slightly lighter color, is foam clay, and I did that on both axes along all of the edges. Um, I'm using this as a gap filler, so instead of using like quick seal, which is what I used to use as my gap filler, I pretty much always use foam clay now. I like foam clay a lot more because A, it's sandable slash dremelable so nice and B it turns into the exact same thing as the foam so it has the same texture and like you can't tell once you've painted that it's a different substance than the rest of the thing whereas with quick seal at least the way I would use it you could still see if you got really close that it was something slightly different the texture was slightly different so yeah, the, the edges, I don't know if I showed you, but the edges were really messy. Um, when I put the edges on the blades, it didn't go super well. So they still are messy, but at least all of the holes are filled. And tomorrow, I think the first thing I'm going to do is take a bunch of stuff outside to Dremel. I need to Dremel all of the details that I made. Cat drama. <laughs> I need to dremel all the details I made. I need to dremel down this foam clay um, after it dries overnight. So I'm excited for tomorrow. Wish I could just live like this, just making for hours and hours every day, but waiting for retirement to do that, I guess. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, good morning. It is Sunday. I have been dremeling all day. I think I mentioned yesterday that I had a ton of dremeling to do and I wasn't up for it yesterday. Just like, 
it makes such a mess and in the summer it's not super bad because you can just do it outside and the mess goes outside and you can just brush off before you come in but in the winter obviously you either do it outside and are freezing or do it inside and then have to deal with dust going everywhere so um this is actually the first day of the winter that it's been really cold and I had like two hours of dremeling to do so I wasn't up for going outside and doing it so I moved my mannequin out into the hallway so that I didn't get dust all over my costume but yeah I've vacuumed twice <laughs> in my workshop today just trying to get keep ahead of the dust it's not fun, but I got a lot done. So um, let me show you where the axes are right now. So the blades, the edges still need work. They're still rough, um, but they look a lot better. And some parts I think are probably done. Like this edge is looking like it's almost there. Then same with the other. Oh, you can't see because it's upside down. But And then um, I also cleaned up this edge here. So this is a seam here that has been cleaned up. And then I also added the, I finished these details. These are what hold on the spikes. So those have been attached, and then the back pieces have been attached too. These look like little pieces of leather or something. So the two things I want to do are I want to work on the spikes. I haven't even really patterned those yet. And then I also want to do a little bit of the engineering work, um, putting the pins in because yesterday I got a couple of supplies I needed to do that from Home Depot. So it's it's two o'clock. I have D&D at 6.30, but I'm not feeling super high energy. So honestly, four hours may not be enough to do all of that, but we'll see. Progress is progress and Hopefully I'll feel better tomorrow. Oh well, like I said, if it doesn't happen this weekend, then it wasn't meant to be. And it's, you know, the whole costume has been taking forever. So hopefully it'll be worth it in the end. <laughs> All right, um, I think I'm gonna pattern the spikes first. So let's do that. I got this kneaded eraser. Um, it's like an artist's eraser and I love it so much. I use it all the time. It doesn't produce dust, so it's way less messy and annoying than a regular eraser. And it also never um, disappears because you're not using bits of it to erase. Um, you can see I've used it so much that it's just got streaks of pencil stuck in it, but I highly recommend getting one of these for patterning. Another nice thing about kneaded erasers is that you can, I feel like you have more control about of like how much of the thing you erase. So I'm just going to do 
a light erase of the lines that I like so that I can start with a, you know, the guide of where, see how you can still see instead of just erasing the whole thing. So I need a ruler. I think I want to make the base of these all the same. So we can do like four and a half centimeters. watching art YouTube and one thing that a an educated and career artist said one time that really stuck with me was to commit to your lines so obviously you've just seen me sketch and that's really messy and just like a bunch of different lines all on top of each other but once I go to make the shape that it's going to be, um, I don't sketch. Like, it's one solid line. And that's how I can get a nice arc and am more likely to get the shapes I want the first time. Sometimes when I watch other people pattern, they're just like eh, 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 trying to get a nice curve or a nice straight line or you know just trying to get the shape of something and I just want to take the pen and just like stick it to the paper you know like even if you're not going to use that line in the end like if you if you stick it to the paper and don't pick it up you're gonna end up with a nicer arc or a straighter line or um, or at least a line that you can tell like where it's supposed to be you know like if you're too sketchy then what's the point if you go to cut out your pattern you're not going to know where to cut so um committing to your line and like feeling confident as you move your pencil like that's a piece of advice that's really made a big difference for me when it comes to patterning you know, i don't draw at all i'm not a flat artist by any means but I can still like make a pattern and and replicate a shape and um, yeah boldness with your writing utensil it's made a big big difference for me I labeled these with what they are but I didn't label them with um, uh, foam thickness that I'm using or I'm what I guess I'm going to use obviously I'll change this if I if it doesn't work but because I have to make these axes again I'm trying to be like super meticulous um, in taking notes so that I'm not refiguring out everything when I go to do the exact same thing again um, once they're done. So I'm trying, I'm trying to um, be kind to my future self, but we'll see how it goes when I get to um, the second set, whether I have any major regrets. <laughs>
in order to give these a little bit more dimension um, I am using a cutting in technique you can see how this hasn't been dribbled yet but already has some spiky clawy shape um, so let me show you how I do that I've just marked halfway along the base and I'm just gonna draw a line this is a guide Oops. Once again, commit to your line and you'll end up with a better arc. And then you take your X-Acto blade and um, it helps, as always, if it's really sharp. And you want to cut at an angle uh, right outside the line, but you don't want to cut all the way through the foam. So I'm just cutting, um, you know, like a third or a quarter, a half, depending on how dramatic you want your top shape to be. So do that on each side of the line. I already messed up and cut through one of mine and had to start over so it's just part of the process <laughs> and then once you have both of your cuts done you can pick up that piece and just pull it out and then you end up with a groove like this like a trench so let me go put contact cement in there and I'll come back once it's dried all right so I've just put contact cement like in the trench and let it get tacky just the regular way that you use contact cement and now you just fold it ta-da and this isn't useful just for making spikes. Um, you can also use it to like make turns in your armor or to make bevels. Um, it's very versatile. It takes a little bit of practice to like connect your cuts so that you can just peel the trench out and also to not cut through the foam every time. Let me show you the one that I cut through. Yeah, see this one, I cut the trench out, but I went way too far. So on the other side, it's just cut through the foam entirely. And I just did this, like this is a mistake that I still <laughs> make pretty consistently, so. It takes some feel, but oh, gosh, it's just so pretty and dramatic. Highly recommend.
far. I still need Dremels, but I'm not willing to be covered in foam dust right now, so I think I'm gonna tape them onto the axe just to see what they look like real quick. Well, that looks pretty epic. done a lot of work without filming anything but I wanted to give you a quick update before I close out this vlog because the axes are looking like something that's not a hundred percent foam <laughs> one second so here's one and here's the other <laughs> Wow Obviously, they still need uh, all of the other end done. That end still just wood that's been unskinned and doesn't have any of the mechanical bits yet, but this looks so nice. I spent a lot of time sanding the edges um, added a little bit more detail like the teeth on uh, the pokey bit but um, I love them I can't wait for them to be done I can't wait for the whole thing to be done and I'm getting really close oh. so uh, hey thanks for coming along with me um, for this little bit of crafting and I hope you had fun I had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.